over to you and give this to you. Yes, mein Schatz. Sehr good. gut, danke. Hello. I'll let you take the show. Hello, there we go. Wie geht's, gut? I can't hear you. Wie geht's, gut? All is clear. Wow, back in 1989, I sang a song. Do you remember the song? All right, well, then if you do, sing it along with me. I've been looking for freedom. I've been looking so long. I've been looking for freedom. Still the search goes on. And then the wall came down. Just because of that one song. Isn't it amazing? So since then, I'm going around the world singing songs. But no other walls have come down. Anyway, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, today was supposed to be a slow day. <laughs> and we have an amazing crowd. I wanted to say more than anything, thank you, uh, Dankeschön, for supporting me for so many years. I mean, uh, the song was in 1989. Does anybody ever remember any of the other songs? Crazy for you. Crazy for me. <laughs> you and I belong together like the sand and sea. Or how about my worst song? Do, do a line cause Nick's for staying. <laughs> I'm still trying to remember what the words mean. We had a song this time, or this time around, yeah. We had a big hit song with, in German with a girl named Gwen. You remember that song? Wir zwei allein heut Nacht. Hey, was glaubst du, was sie gerade macht? Wie man da wohl wohnt, hinterm gelben Mond. And um, hopefully we'll be back on tour. We, yesterday I kind of announced something that I'm quite proud of, and it's happening. We are going on the first Hasselhoff cruise. <laughs> so you'll be on a prisoner, on a ship, with the Hoff. Captain Hoff will be driving the ship. And it's going to party for four days. And uh, you think you saw the kind of partying I did on the internet. You haven't even started <laughs> to, to believe what we can do on the ship. The ship actually leaves from Savona and then goes to Barcelona and then goes to Roma and then goes to Marseille. And we go out on November 9th. And um, all you got to do is go to Hasselhoff.com or HasselhoffOnline.com or find out one of these flyers. There you go. Find out one of these flyers, and it'll give you all the information. Because we're doing a lot of songs from when I started, mostly co concert songs from uh, the 80s, 90s. And then I'm going to be doing a set from uh, my Broadway set. I did uh, This Is The Moment from uh, Jekyll and Hyde, which I did on Broadway. And then I went to the West End, which is the Broadway of London. And we did Chicago. And uh, we'll be doing that. And also I did I work with Mel Brooks and the producers. But uh, I wanted to say thank you very much for for turning up so much. It's been crazy. It's been nonstop pictures and pictures and pictures. And I finally just ran into my, my sister, really, and a good friend, Pamela Anderson. Have you seen Pamela? You should go see Pamela. She looks good. <laughs> and yeah, and I was actually looking at her line, and I said, my god, Pamela has a long line for pictures. And I realized it was for me. <laughs> so we have been going, hello, 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 we get, we get, we get. Anyway, in all the pictures, everyone seems to have a Don't Hassle the Hoff t-shirt here. Um, yesterday I talked about one man can make a difference. And um, it's really a good place to start because one man can make a difference. One man can make a difference was the theme of Knight Rider. I think everyone has stayed with me so long because Knight Rider was such a big influence in their childhood. And we tried to make it that way. We tried to make it about saving lives. Kit, my car, the 
from Knight Rider was programmed to save lives, not take lives. So it really wasn't about um, violence, it was about action. And Baywatch was the same thing, it was about action and romance. I would put heart, humor, and romance on every script. Now, on my script, I put let go, let God. And that means sometimes when things are driving you crazy and you're angry about everything because everything will not go your way, just forget about it. Just let it go, just let it go and say, I'm sorry, it's in your hands. And then God, it's God's responsibility to take over and to show you the way. And I'm telling you, it happens. It's really easy. And I'm constantly having to do that. But one man can make a difference. It was the theme of Knight Rider. Without you guys, I wouldn't be here. So you have made an amazing difference in my life. And maybe because I got lucky, I really got lucky, and got Michael Knight, I made a difference in your life. And now, um, I believe in, um, I believe in, in creating, creating good stuff for yourself, you know? I've had an amazing career. I'm still fighting for a good Knight Rider movie. I'm still, yeah. I really want Knight Rider the movie to come back. And not as a joke, you know? I did the Baywatch movie with Pamela. And, we're gonna, and so far, we're tested well. We haven't seen it, so, you know, the, the jury is still out on how great the Baywatch movie will be. The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, awesome dude, awesome. Lovely guy, and same with Dwayne, with uh, Zac Efron. Yeah, very cool people. We went down and we filmed, and they were really respectful and really wanted to know what Baywatch was about. But um, right now I'm into, like, kind of letting go, letting God in a see it. If you see it in your head and you believe it, you will live it. So if you're a young kid who knows how to surfboard, you know, or knows how to play guitar or knows how to sing, take your natural talent and see yourself successful. So if you see yourself successful and you live that way, then it usually comes true. So in fact, I did, I told my daughters, my theory in life is about see it, believe it, and live it. <laughs> is that God? <laughs> wow. Well, hello, God. Speck and Sie Deutsch. <laughs> see it, believe it, live it, right? And so she had it tattooed on her arm. Ah! Which is a little bit too much for me. Anyway, my girlfriend's here from Wales, and she says I preached too much and then I should just open it up for questions and answers. Where are you, Haley? Where is she? Are you still, oh, there you are. Are you still Facebooking? Are you still Facebooking? Yeah? Yeah, okay. All is clear. All right, so, do we have any questions for the Hoff? There's a lady over here. Are you still Facebooking? Yeah. All right, I'd like to say hello to everyone on Facebook. We are in Germany. In Dortmund, all is klar. And we're talking about the cruise, and we're talking about believing in ourselves, and we're talking about whatever you want to ask me. I hope this is a good question. Hi. Hi. Um, you did Panto last year in Glasgow. <laughs> I did Panto last year in Glasgow. You're definitely Scottish. I'm from Newcastle. Are oh, you from Newcastle? Oh, that's close. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Um, would you consider? <laughs> Hundred miles. It's still a it's still a very very weird accent. <laughs> Would you consider doing something like that again? Did you enjoy it? Well, I, I just left. I'm doing the panto right now. I'm doing Hoff the Hook in Peter Pan, and I'm in um, Cardiff, in Wales. Anybody know where Wales is? Yeah. Well, we start the show December 10th, where I play Captain Hook, where. It, if you don't know what panto is, panto is an interaction with the audience. I come, don't you just love me? And the audience goes, no, you, we don't. And I say, yes, you do. No, we don't. And basically talking back to the audience. And it's a really cool version of Peter Pan that usually employs a local comedian. And this year, last year, we did it in Glasgow. And uh, I love Newcastle. Ant and Deck are from Newcastle. 
They are. Aunt and Deck are from Newcastle, aren't they? Yeah. Do you really live in Newcastle or are you lying? Okay, oh, you live, oh, so you don't live near Aunt and Deck. Okay. Anyway, we're doing the show called Peter Pan. It's my seventh show. It starts December 10th in, um, in Wales, in Cardiff. You gotta take a plane from Dusseldorf to London and then a train and you're there. <laughs> I know that, we just did it. Any other questions? Come on, guys. Here, David. Hello. Hello, David, I'm Hello. Manu. Do you remember me from yesterday? <laughs> I'm glad you didn't say from last night. <laughs> I wanted to ask... I used to run into that problem a lot. I wanted to ask you one question. Okay, one question, yes. Yes, about your daughters. About my daughter. Yes. Which one, Haley? Or both, both daughters. Yes. I know that you that you manage them uh, many years ago. Do you still manage them? When I, you, I when you they know sing? What? Every father in the room knows it's impossible to manage your daughters. <laughs> <laughs> because they I, they know much more than me. They know how to run their own career. They know how to sing. My one daughter's name is Haley Hasselhoff, and she is, I'm really proud of her. She has uh, designed her own line of clothing, and it's for plus-size girls. And so it's actually in Nordstrom's and all over Europe. It's called LV. You can go online and find that, Haley Hasselhoff. And my other daughter is a singer, and her name is Taylor Ann Hasselhoff, and her stuff will be coming out soon. And um, they both live with me most of the time, but... Uh, I tried to manage their music career, and it was going really well. And then they decided they wanted to do it on their own. But, you know, it's, it's, it's time for, you know, when you're a kid, you, you got to grow up and you got to make your own mistakes. The most important thing you can do with kids, I find, is be honest. You tell them, look, if you do this, this is going to happen. If you do this, this is going to happen. And the most important thing that I've gotten from my kids and why I'm still alive and so many people from the 80s are not is because they didn't have anybody in their life who was honest enough to tell them to stop or dad, we love you. You know, if Michael Jackson had people who really loved him, he'd still be alive today. Anyone, anyone else? Hey, Harry, Mr. Hey, do you have a question for me? Here. Hey, buddy. Greetings from Guatemala. Guatemala. Yeah. Hola, ¿qué tal? Bien, 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 todo bien. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Uh, do you like South Park? Because they surely like you. <laughs> Come and suckle my big black. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll tell you my story about South Park. Yeah. I was watching South Park, and my daughters ran in and told me, Dad, <laughs> You're on South Park, and I thought it was just a cartoon. And one of the guys in South Park had decided that he wanted to look like David Hasselhoff, so he had plastic surgery. And he was walking around with a photograph of David Hasselhoff because he wanted to F chicks and sign autographs. <laughs> and then he decided he better go back to being a regular person because his life was really shallow. <laughs> I think South Park is brilliant. I love, um, my favorite, my f I mean, I love The Simpsons growing up. We had Bart Simpson, the girl on Baywatch. But um, South Park w is, was, and still is, I think, the leading one. You know, um, Seth MacFarlane's family guy, he's a cool guy. He's really great. But my heart, my heart belongs to SpongeBob. <laughs> Are you, are you David Hasselhoff? I said, yeah, can you swim? Because yeah, I, I saved SpongeBob's life. And without me being here on this stage, SpongeBob would have been a dried up old sponge. Probably for sale out here at some Comic-Con. No, I love SpongeBob. When, when SpongeBob came around, my agent called up and goes, well, we got this call 
about you being in a big movie and it's with a sponge. And his name is Bob. And I said, what's that? And my daughters ran in and I said, you ever heard of SpongeBob? They went, SpongeBob, oh my God! So my daughters came in and said, Dad, you gotta do SpongeBob. And um, it changed my life because it kept me current with the kids. Right now, if you stay current with the kids and they know who you are, it's amazing how many kids know who I am now. And um, I just finished something I'm really proud of. You guys should all go out and get it. It's called Call of Duty. It's a new game, and I'm in Call of Duty, and we kill zombies. <laughs> so it's more for the, um, it's more for the, uh, it's, it's 18 and over, but instead of just uh, having like real warfare, you're killing zombies. So it's a little bit less intense. Um, but also, I hear some great things. We won an Emmy just recently in the international awards for the best comedy in the world called Hoff the Record. Have you seen Hoff the Record? Yeah, listen, Hoff the Record is available on DVD and Hoff the Record is, is on, I think, a, an internet channel here. But if you can find it, watch it. It is so good and, and honest to God, we're really trying hard to, um, to bring back uh, Hoff the Record because even though we won an Emmy, which is a very big award for it being a cool show, we have no place for it. So we'd love to bring it back and, and actually do it here in Germany in the, th the third season it would be so awesome. Because I find my son in the opening episode, his name is Dieter, Dieter Hasselhoff. And he's in my bedroom, and he's wearing a jacket with lights on it. <laughs> and that's how this series starts, and it's pretty funny. Any other questions? Where are you? Over there. Over there, on the, on the, on the, 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 oh, there in you the are. suit. Oh, there you are. Oh, you get man. around. Yes, sir. Mr. Hasoff, um, yes. it's a great honor for me to meet you. You are my childhood hero. And I've got a special question to you. Um, when you were shooting the Baywatch series, you had two different sons, Hobie. One of them was Brandon Call, and one was Jeremy Jackson. Which of them was your favorite? <laughs> wow, that's a horrible question. <laughs> you know, I love them both. Brandon Call was the first Hobie, and then uh, what happened was the show was canceled. And, and because of Germany, because of Germany, we bought the show and we brought the show back. And uh, Brandon Call then had had another series, so he was not available. So we had to audition new kids to play my son. But um, the way that Baywatch happened was, Baywatch was canceled. And we found out that we had such a huge international audience, especially in Germany. They said, can you give us more Night Riders? And I said, no, Night Riders over. And they said, but can you, can you bring it back? And I said, no, I don't own Knight Rider, but I have a new show called Baywatch. And, they, and this is the honest to God truth. The German says, does it have a car? <laughs> and I said, what? Does the new show have a car? And I said, no, no, but it has the same, it has the same influence as, as Knight Rider. It's about saving lives, it's about lifeguards and, and on the beach. And we don't have, but no car. I said, no, are you in it? And I said, yes, okay, well we buy it anyway. <laughs> because looking, it's a true story. And so we raised $425,000, Deutschmarks at that point. And um, we went back to Los Angeles and tried to raise the rest and we did. And we ended up lasting a show that lasted uh, 13 episodes on NBC. We bought it, we produced it, and we lasted 222 episodes and um, sold the show for a little bit of money. And, uh, and it lasted um, uh, 10 years. And um, I'm really proud of that. Any other questions? Yeah, what is it, buddy? 
Hi, you already talked about uh, SpongeBob, but I wanted to ask you about uh, the Sharknado movies you were in. Like, SpongeBob <laughs> is so different Sharknado. from Sharknado, but <laughs> both of those roles, both in SpongeBob and in Sharknado, do not take themselves too seriously. And how was that? Well, Sharknado is probably the weirdest thing I've ever done. <laughs> oh, come on, man. I mean, I mean, I, I thought Piranha 3 Double D was bad, but uh, <laughs> my dad liked that movie. <laughs> no, Sharknado. I mean, Sharknado was famous because I think somebody on Twitter said, have you seen this terrible movie? Yeah. And then all of a sudden it got a billion hits. And uh, I had to do the movie because it was so freaking hysterically bad. And um, the cast is really nice, the crew is really nice. Next year, we're going to call it Hoffnado. <laughs> There's going to be like a thousand Hoffs getting caught all over. You'll be plane crashes because, ah! They'll be, they'll be running in. There's Hoffs! There's Hoffs everywhere! And um, no, Sharknado was fun. I, I'm not so sure I'll do it again. No, I, no it took, it took about, it took to about a week to get the thing. blood off. You know, the last time they put me inside the shark. Haley, want to say something? No. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Anyway, anybody else? David. Anyway, Shark Nano was a lot of fun. Where are we? David, look on the other side. <laughs> I'm here. Oh, I see. I see you. Go <laughs> ahead. See. You got it. Turn around. Yeah, you go ahead. You know me. I like you. I can see you from here. <laughs> Where are you? David, here. Okay, I'm Chris from Austria. I have been your security guard on Novarock. Your security guard from On where? Nova Rock. On oh, Nova Rock, yeah. yeah. You, we'll will do, you will come next year? Yes, we are doing Nova Rock next year. You will year. make a Hof party? Unbelievable. <laughs> Nova Rock, I don't know if you haven't known. Nova Rock is a, is a hard, heavy metal festival, and they asked me to play at midnight, and I followed Iron Maiden, honest to God. It was all, <laughs> it was I mean, awesome. Can you imagine, I'm, I follow Iron Maiden, I'm going crazy for you. I mean, I thought everybody would start throwing shit. Yeah, you know what happened? Nobody left. It was crazy. Nobody left. Um, somebody threw a hamburger. And I caught the hamburger. And then I put on a slide that said F. Hoff. And then immediately everyone went, whoa, we love him. He's cool, yeah. So everybody stayed. And we had 100,000 people in the audience, and uh, even Ozzy Osbourne was backstage. It was quite a night. And they asked me back. So uh, we're going to do all the old hits from when we were kids, because I think at midnight, everyone's <laughs> kind of half in the bag, you know? Yeah. So they're excited to sing Crazy For You and Looking For Freedom, and is everybody happy? And, and uh, having, you know, it's a real good feeling, stuff like that. But um, it just shows that the heavy metal crowd still loves the Hoff. I was amazed that they stayed, and I was really excited that they invited us back. So I think, what year is it? Uh, well, it's, it's it was two years ago. It's, 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 it was two years ago. But June, it's June. Yeah. What year is it this year? And I have been your security guard. I yeah, was but, but what, yeah. what, what month is it this year? Oh, June? It was June, yeah, yeah. June 17th. Yeah, I'll <laughs> Can we start. come back next year? I'll see you there. <laughs> okay, I'll I'm all so. signed up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah, if you guys haven't been to Nova Rock, you got to go. It's a lot of fun. It's just insane. A lot of fun. So Any other have, questions? We have time for about two more questions. Anyone? Yeah, okay. Oh, wait, I'll hop down. Hold on. Uh-oh. <laughs> Hi, David. Hello, this is Marcus. <laughs> we call him Marcus on Wheels. He's been following with me for maybe, what, 15 years now? Uh, that's right. Yeah, and he's part of a company called the Hoff Army. <laughs> and the Hoff Army kind of shows up just about wherever I go, and, and then they're like really super close friends. What's your question? Well, I got two, but, but um, one would be, could you co consider yourself doing Wacken, which is something like Nova Rock, but here in Germany? Well, yeah, well, you, if you book it, I'll come. When is it? 
I don't know. I will find out for you. Okay. So, uh, another question would be, what are your Christmas wishes? My Christmas wishes really are just to be happy. You know, it's, um, and to make someone else happy. My fiance came home and said, I spent 40 pounds today because she saw that they were raising money for kids in the hospital. There's a t-shirt that I have, it says, don't hassle. It says, um, party your hassle off, party your ass off. And part of your hassle off, it goes to a charity called Cystic Fibrosis because we met a little boy with cystic fibrosis who became a real good friend of mine and passed away. So we decided to try and raise some money for his family. The most important thing you can do on Christmas is remember that there's a lot of people that don't have it as good as we do. You know, that's the great thing about Comic-Con is we're allowed to dress up and pretend and be ourselves. And you can be a Nick Fury guy, you can be a Kung Fury guy, you can be Game of Thrones, you can do whatever you want for one day. And you'll find other people who, who you can talk to. And it's great, that's what Comic-Cons are about. It's about bringing the world together. And that's what Christmas is about. This Christmas, I have one day off, and that day I'll spend with Haley my fiance's family in Wales, because I'm in Wales. And then my daughters will come and see me uh, after Christmas for the New Year's holiday. But the most important thing you can do is remember your brothers and your sisters and, and that it's a tough world we're living in right now. And to make sure that if somebody needs something, you take the time to help that person. That's all. Sometimes if you just know somebody's name, they, it's, it's an amazing gift. Any other questions? No, oh. no more questions? Oh, okay, we have one more here and then we have to wrap it up. Oh, there he more is. More photos with the Knight Rider car. Hello. Behind Hello. you. Right oh, here, Michael. Yeah. Oh, hi. David, how you doing? Good. Um, the old kid had some special features. Did you miss anything and what would you put in a new kit, if it gave one? The question is, the old kit, which was the Knight Rider 2000, the kit car, had some special features. Well, the most amazing thing about the Knight Rider car, 34 years later, they've all come true. I mean, they all come true. All the cars frickin' talk. And the cars park themselves. And I went up to Mountain View on an on a, uh, invitation from Google and a man named Sergey who runs Google. And he said, I have a present for you. I said, what is it? He said, you'll see. They picked me up in the airport in a self-driving car. So at the airport, I got in the car. <laughs> And I was, there was no driver. And the car took off. And it went on the freeway. And it changed lanes. And it stayed the correct amount of cars behind the other lanes, the other cars. And went 65 miles per hour, which is just 10 miles over the speed limit. Which is cool, because you, you really don't get a ticket for that in America. But they programmed the car to actually break the law. <laughs> But the car drove itself. And then I ended up meeting with Sergey later and I said, tell me, what's this all about? And he said, well, it was, it's really invented for handicapped people so that you'll be able on your phone in the next couple years, be able to program, pick me up at such and such. The car comes, you have a code, you hit the code, the doors open, and then you, you put a code in, it takes you to the airport or wherever you wanna go. So, the most amazing thing about the Knight Rider car, it seemed like fantasy to all of us growing up, and it was. We jumped the cars ourselves, we, it was crazy. We had a crazy time doing that show. It was so much fun. But now, it's all true. Even, even the car that I'm driving now, if something's behind me, it'll stop before it runs over someone. It was amazing. Anyway. I guess that's enough, huh? 
Well, never for us, but I think well, we have to, you know? Yeah, I gotta go back to work. You... We're doing some more pictures with the Knight Rider car. And uh, if you don't want that picture, go to Pamela's line. <laughs> and, um, but it's a real pleasure to be back, and it's a pleasure that um, so many people turned up. I had no idea there would actually be anybody here today, because I know it's a light day, but wow, it's been incredible. And um, check out Hoff the Record, my new TV series. You'll like it. Baywatch is coming out. And I um, can't talk about this movie that I'm in, but it's so cool. And that's coming out. And Call of Duty. And uh, like Christmas, I'll be back every year. Thank Provo you so much. Give it up for David Haslam. Thank you. Ciao. I've been looking for freedom. I've been looking so long. I've been looking for freedom. Still the search goes on. No one knows the second line. <laughs> Cheers.